look at pathway of longevity, we can think of uh, four scenarios. One is life extension, extension. The Stralberg's case is from Gulliver Travel. He came to one of those places where they had those Stralberg's that were immortal, but they continued aging. And, and it's a terrible story about them. And I don't think that's what we want. We don't want to have immortality with continued aging. So this is just uh, for the framework. What we're going to discuss is, first of all, compression morbidity, the ability to live healthier uh, for longer and be sick very uh, short time at the end of their life. The Dorian Gray case, remember Dorian Gray uh, stopped aging, but when he looked in the mirror, he saw his right age. By the way, try it. I'm doing that. I'm looking at the mirror and I'm saying, well, I, I, I myself am not aging. I'm just seeing that in the mirror. A, a really big task is the reversing aging or the Wolverine case or the, or, or the fountain of youth of taking old people and making them young. You know, that's very difficult, but we can do some of it. And then Vittorio will talk about a forever young, really, about the Peter Pan case, you know, isn't it going to be easier just to take somebody at 20 and give them some therapy every month or every year and stop the aging altogether? And now I want to go to the forever young thing. And Vittorio, I, I realize I haven't introduced you, but you're in Stanford. Thanks for waking up for us. You've done an incredible job on, on stem cells. So tell us, you know, I, I think I think what really was important for us was to know that you can take a sperm of a 70-year-old man and an egg of a 50-year-old woman, and we can measure, you know, Vadim can measure their age probably, but when the blastocyst is formed, we erase the age of the parents. So we have this built-in system where we can erase the age. So how do we how do we erase the age? later on, Vittorio. Yeah, hi, hi, Nair, and hi, everybody. Well, that's that's a great question. And, you know, frankly, uh, this has been, uh, you know, the inspiration of the of our work over the course of the last uh, 10 to 15 years, I have to I have to say, uh, which is exactly what you just said, like, like realizing that there is there is already um, for for from for an evolutionary kind of goal, there is already a machine that exists uh, in nature uh, that uh, is responsible, you know, for erasing. Uh, so the machine was built for other for other purposes, right? To, as you said, to change the identity of two fully differentiated cell types, the sperm and the egg, and make a new organism out of, out of those. But embedded in that in that molecular mechanism, there is already a lot to learn about. Uh, how epigenetic marks, for example, of, of aging can be erased, the reset uh, and wiped out. Uh, and this, in my opinion, this has been the inspiration uh, for, for two fields uh, which have, will have a lot to say and to do uh, in the future, you know, for geroscience uh, and in the longevity field. The first, of course, is the discovery of iPSCs. Uh, because you know the, the work on nuclear transfer was the inspiration somehow for the work that you know led them to, to the discovery of Shinya Yamanaka of IPSCs, uh, which is the kind of the simplification of what nature does with the reproduction in, in a test tube uh, by reprogramming the somatic cells to IPSCs. And you can think about IPSCs, and you know, we have endless examples about that, that you, you can really use IPSCs to generate in a in a in a in a cell autologous fashion in an individual fashion uh, unlimited you know numbers of, of stem cells tissues organs uh, of course you know the field is developing but you know there's endless examples of you know how ips technology can be utilized to generate new organs new tissues which are youthful uh, and they can replace a dysfunctional aged organ you know in in any patient virtually and the second, I think the second field uh, that I think uh, is now taking off uh, is the idea that if you control that reprogramming process uh, without going all the way back uh, to a, an undifferentiated state, which is, you know, the IPS state, if you can control that reprogramming process very tightly, very, very finely and precisely, you can actually, without going all the way back to IPSCs, you can rejuvenate, bring the clock back 
virtually in any tissue, uh, any uh, any cell type in the in the body, and I in maybe not in the so near future, but you know very soon I think that we will be able to to really start thinking about therapies that are going to be able to reverse the clock, uh, whatever that clock is, <laughs> reverse the clock of, uh, of 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 any any cell type. So. And, and again, you can think about this going back to the Peter Pan, the Peter Pan kind of you know <laughs> analogy. You can think about applying this to to Asian individuals, so you can reverse that process, or you can prevent the process from happening. And so, exciting things to to happen in the future. <laughs>